structured but you know if anyone feels like they like they want more space then there's plenty of space over here. Um, yeah.
Sober, and I'm gonna, as a follow up, I'm going to play a song I wrote about a year later. It was about the first year of what that was like. Fucker today. <laughs> Fuck it. I just sat down. Oh. Fuck it, eh? Alright. What's up, left? Oh. Hey, Wilhelm. 
Oh, hey, man. <laughs> oh, fucking crimson. Yeah, that's always a pain in the ass. That's always a pain in the ass. Tuck Tuck is having a really bad conversation right now. Uh, I presume Tucker Carlson, maybe. Um, and don't know with who. But, I mean, he's been he's been on a tear recently. Hey, Cassidy. Hey, Karina. Finished my taxes. I'm exhausted and loved. Uh, yeah, I did see some shit by him. That, yeah, that was tonight. Um, fucking... What if these bodies of tortured dead civilians were staged? What if they're fake? What if the Ukrainian military killed them and then blamed Russia? I'm not saying any of this is true. I'm just asking the questions. Why can't we ask these questions? That's Tucker Carlson. That was just probably moments ago. <laughs> How is that was tonight? <laughs> uh -huh, so fucking or today or yesterday. I don't fucking know. Either way. That was Tucker recently. So. Uh, it's all transphobia. Ah, you know. What else is new? What else is new? I'm looking better. Not quite there yet. Still a little. But I am looking better. Yeah, I'll take that. Uh, he thinks doctors shouldn't be allowed to prescribe reversible hormone blocks. I'm just asking questions. I know, Viva. Isn't it such a dirty tactic? I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking questions. Why can't I ask these questions? Bad faith piece of shit. Uh, so just doubling down after Russia outed him as an asset? Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, he's, he's you know, effectively on the payroll. But what if? I know, right, Theo? What if? What if? Um, oh, I meant to look at this headline because this headline caught my attention. Um, okay, well, I'm not reading this. Orlando Sentinel, go fuck yourselves. <coughs> oh. um, let's see. Uh, was that shooting in California? You heard about it. Um, okay, so that would be under the Four Horsemen, probably. And I think Caboose got to that. Yes, shooting in Sacramento. Six dead, ten injured. Or, no, I'm sorry, at least twelve injured. Uh, six people are dead, though. Um, multiple shooters fired into crowds as bars and nightclubs emptied. Um, three of those killed were women. Three were men. Suspect still at large, found a stolen handgun, reviewing video footage. So there you go, Theo. That's, that's I mean, that's long and short of it. Uh, and if you want a video of some fucked up shit, um, feel free to go over to the Four Horsemen channel on the Discord server, scroll up a bit, um, and look for Caboose's streamable video post. And that's where you'll find the video of the shooting. Um, so... Connor B, that's gotta be dude, B, that's gotta be fucking Will Alexander. It's gotta be Will Alexander. <laughs> no, strictly Scottish, but I get, uh, but I get lit doing uh, with fish suppers. I get on my travels, HTV long distance. Apart from the Aberdeen, Peterhead, Fraserburgh area, to me the standard is pretty piss poor. Didn't hear you rarely get a bad fish supper. It's always twice the size of the ones we get in the Paisley area. Just go on uh, there for uh, eight, 50, uh, eight pounds fifty pence. Two big uh, massive bits of fish and plenty of chips. Couldn't have finished it. Don't know what your thoughts are on are on this. Uh, so how many mass shootings per day this year so far? Um, fucking 120 mass shootings so far. So like how many days in are we? Um, let's see. That's eh, we'll call it 94. We'll count today. So like 94, wait, are we 94 days in? We got 120 mass shootings. <laughs> hey, Cricks. And thank you, Alexander. 
Thank you as always. Oh. So, yeah. So. Yeah, that figures. Okay, so um, Florida legislature, um, hey, Big Bear, Florida legislature just took $100 million out of a nationally, quote, respected affordable housing rental assistance program for low-income families and put it into a home-buying program that exists in name only. So the florida republicans let's face it the florida conservatives the fiscal conservatives of florida have just stolen a hundred million dollars and put it into a slush fund they stole a hundred million dollars from an affordable rental assistance program and put it into a slush fund yeah because they put it into a home buying program that doesn't exist uh the uh the orlando sentinel glazy the orlando sentinel Uh, and apparently they should... Hey, Hildebeest, thanks for the raid. Fucking, apparently they just promised that they would not do this again. They've done this before, Glazy. This is the second time they've pulled a move like this, apparently. And they promised that they wouldn't do it. Oh, for, uh, and how did your, uh, how did your stream go, uh, uh, Hilda? Uh, we're just starting to talk about how the Florida conservatives stole, managed to steal $100 million out of an affordable housing rental program and put it into a slush fund for a home buying program that doesn't exist. It exists in name only. There is no method to disperse the funds. There's no application process. There's no treasurer. There's no one holding the bag on this one. They've literally got a slush fund set up. Is that a maniac? Um, so yeah, yeah. The, the Florida Republicans just stole a hundred million dollars out of a rental assistance program to put it into a slush fund. So we were just starting to talk about that. How did your stream go, Hilda? <clears throat> the stream went great. Lots of love. However, I have a lot of mini hate raids. Oh, I love them. I love them. That stuff, that stuff, that stuff's fuel for me these days. I enjoy them. Um, is the link for this article in Discord? It is not. Um, but if you want it, I'll put it in, I'll put it in econ. It belongs in econ. Jesus Christ, that's a fucking cursed URL and I just fucking pasted it. Hold on, give me a sec. Oh my God, is that actually the URL? Florida, uh, the Orlando, uh, Orlando Sentinel is a shit website. Um, and it may be gated. So here, here's, I'll just fucking put a summary underneath it so you can have it. Uh, those bot raid names were pretty yikes. Um, uh, so Crimson, look in business, econ, and finance. Um, fucking Florida. You hear about how the teachers out there are hitting back against the don't say gay law? I have seen it. it, it look, okay, so there's no confirmation that that is real, but it is hilarious if it becomes a thing because it's a perfect example of, um, you know, your your her intentionally vague law so you can smack the queers around with it um turn around and bite you in the ass because you don't understand legislation yeah i want to believe i know right beast so for those of you who don't know what we're talking about a letter started making the rounds and the moms for liberty again uh for those coming in from hilda who don't follow me or watch me on the regular go watch rules for radicals we've got a playlist it's not quite done yet but this is straight out of rules for radicals this is straight sololinski make them hold hold the system to the letter of their own regular regulations or law right make them follow their own rules no system can ever survive following its own rules they all collapse so this is a letter that was supposedly sent around. And I can tell you that the Moms for Liberty group in Florida is freaking out. They freaked out over this. Um, so there is reaction. Whether it's real or not, there is actual reaction coming off of this letter. But this is what has been making the rounds. Dear Florida parent slash caretaker, 
The Florida House of Representatives has recently ruled that, quote, classroom instruction by school personnel or third parties on sexual orientation or gender identity may not occur in kindergarten through grade three or in a manner that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate for students, end quote. To be in accordance with this policy, I will no longer be referring to your student with gendered pronouns. All students will be referred to as they or them. I will no longer use gendered titles such as Mr. or Mr. or Mrs. or make any reference to my husband slash wife in this classroom. From now on, I will be using the non-gendered title mix. Furthermore, I will be removing all books or instruction which refer to a person as being a mother, father, husband, or wife, as these are gender identities that also may allude to sexual orientation. Needless to say, all books which refer to as a character uh, to the character as he or she will also be removed from this classroom. If you have any concerns about this policy, please feel free to contact your local congressperson. So, whether it's real or not, um, ah, thank you, maniac. Yeah, uh, we just got we just finished tactics. Tactics is a long chapter. We just finished tactics the, uh, last week and put it up. It's chapter eight, I think. We are in the home stretch uh, on uh, on rules. This is uh, this is all we have left in this book. This is all we have left. So. We'll get it up probably this week, and the f- the complete rules for radicals by Saul Alinsky will be there. Um, but yes, uh, you know, hey caboose, yeah, the tactics chapter is most assuredly the chapter that you're waiting for. Um, the tactics chapter is the one that gets the wheels turning, as it were. So. If you are an activist, you fancy yourself an activist or an organizer, and you want to better understand how one of the most feared organizers in the history of uh, political organizing in this country, um, what his thoughts on political organizing and community organizing are, then you should probably read Rules for Radicals because Barack Obama basically said it got him elected. I mean, it's the long and short of it. Um, entire t- towns and cities would pass like rules and mandates and legislation making Saul um, persona non grata. His name was enough to strike fear and bring people to the negotiation t- uh, negotiating table um, back in the day when people said, we're bringing Saul Alinsky in to help us organize. All of a sudden, the rubber company or the, f- the chemical company or the manufacturer or the city or the slum lords, all of a sudden they wanted to negotiate. Because Saul Alinsky was a terrifying organizer. He, if he was there, you're basically assured a, a victory. Like you were going to win. It, he was. He was absolutely. He was the thing of nightmares for oppressive douchebags. Um, so if you haven't read or learned some of the lessons that he has handed down from the past definitely worth looking into read the book or just you know like i said go to the youtube channel it's there uh tactics was a very good chapter um yes yes it is crimson um fucking just give me a name beautiful just beautiful praxis uh caboose didn't want to go on a walk after work so i spent the last half an hour cleaning shit around the house hey uh two birds one stone there uh Crygo, I'm preventing Moms for uh, Liberty from co- uh, from coming to Massachusetts. Already got the handle at Moms for Liberty Massachusetts. Very good, Crygo. Very good. Very good. Now I'm hoping Hilda brought some of that attention from the hate raids over here. I'm feeling kind of spicy. Um. Yeah, I, I kind of kind of want to have some fun. I want to have a conversation with somebody. So we'll see what we get up to. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, Florida. <laughs> Florida's on 10-year probation from the federal government now. That's real. That's real. A federal judge put uh, put Florida on a ten year probation. Um, the the state has to get court 
approval, federal court, federal court approval for the next 10 years before it enacts any other changes to these uh, to rules about voter registration, uh, party districting, ballot drop, uh, ballot uh, drop boxes, anything having to do with voting rights or the act of voting. Any legislation, they uh, any changes that the ch- the state wants to make, they have to get co- federal court approval for the next ten years because, quote, repeatedly uh, repeated and recent persistent actions to deny Black Floridians access to the franchise. They've shown a pattern of abuse. And as such, the federal government has stepped in, basically the court system at the federal level has stepped in and said, Florida, that's it. You're on notice. No more. You're grounded. If you want to talk about voting, you have to come talk to us first. No more privileges going out. On your, like Straight up, the state just stepped in on them. That's, this is what the hierarchy can do. This is what the hierarchy can do. It just is what it is. Uh, the hate raids were com- uh, commenting sexually over my uh, autistic child. Sheer pedophile creepiness. Oh, that's weird, Hilda. That's fucking weird. Do you know where they were coming from? To feel free. If you know where they're coming from and you don't want to say it on air, send me a DM. I'd love to know. Uh, <coughs> it's fucking nuts. Oh, yeah. So Florida, Florida is uh, officially on like double secret probation. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so you can't prove, uh, Hilda. I didn't ask if you could prove it. I said I asked if you had any idea. <laughs> That's why I said if you send it to me in the DM, <laughs> you don't have to say it on air if it's you know culpable, right? If you're just like, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, let's see. What did I, what else I want to talk about? Um, oh, I have this map. Holy shit. I have this map. Y'all need to see this map. Y'all need to see this map. There's cat right here. Cat would enjoy this map. Ah. <sighs> These are these are these are self-governing communities in Michoacan. Michoacan, if you're not familiar, is a state in Mexico. It's like saying California or Arizona, New Mexico, or that sort of thing. It is, Michoacan is a state in Mexico. Um, these are all of the self-governing, self-defended uh, communities in Michoacan at present. Um, you can see that the the Chiran one uh, is uh, currently highlighted uh, on this, but. Yes, this is this is progress, especially for Mexico, right? Like for for the people of Mexico, this is um, this is a big deal because basically all of these locations were fucked because the state wouldn't intercede, um, because the cartels are basically either one made the state their bitch or two completely uh are completely co-opted by them so all of these locations essentially were fighting a front a war on two fronts they were fighting on you know the cartel side and they were fighting on the statist side and so they found it easiest to battle that violence to battle the cartels by just saying we're done with all of you the state ends up fucking them in the ass and so what they end up uh, what they end up doing is basically losing to the cartels because the state intercedes and ends up screwing them over just as bad or if not worse. So what these communities have done is essentially f- um, founded uh, self-governing communities. They replace them, as you can see below, they replace them with the standard policy, dual power structure. They replace them with assemblies. They create defense groups. They they uh, they lock down the uh, the uh, the position. They uh, you know entrench the community and then they fucking go to war with the cartels and the state if necessary um and so yeah it, it is uh Chiron, which you know is is highlighted down there you can see is being said it's one of the safest uh towns in the country like once they solved it right it, it immediately went away they just made it uh, too costly for the cartels and the state to inter- interject 
There's just other land. It's the same principle as this is the same principle that hackers and burglars work on. It's the same the same thought process, right? You're not trying to create the world's most secure building that can never be broken into. What you're trying to do is make it too obnoxious for the burglar to get in, so they just move to the next house. That's what the that's what these communities have done is they've just made it too obnoxious. So they'll just move on to the next location like the piece of shit locusts they are. And if you're wondering whether I'm talking about the cartels or the state, um, yes. Um, so what they do is they just move on to the next fucking the next square of land and work with that instead because these are just too costly. Exactly right. So, yeah, that's 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 just what's going on there so you know yeah like there's there is actually um you know there's some let me copy that image and put that in oh you know what i'm putting in pure schadenfreude because the states and the cartels both get fucked in the ass love it uh if you want the map it's fairly high res it's a 25 meg uh image uh into uh in totality um, but, uh, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be over in pure schadenfreude on the discord server if you need and or want it wither. You need to keep track of that. That's very bad. Uh, last night, Crick's, uh, Crick said last night, prime case had a panel about neck, uh, about like necrophilia and then he rated mythics and there were some absolutely deranged people saying bizarre and bigoted racist shit. Yeah, that sounds about right for prime case. He's a grifter piece of shit. What do you want? Uh, you know, Dylan Burns, Prime K's, Hassan, take your fucking pick, man. These are, these are like neolib capitalist grifter pieces of shit. And yeah, I know Hassan's supposed to be socialist or some shit. That's absolute nonsense. Um, so they're like, they're just neolib capitalist grifter pieces of shit. Dude, you can pay your way on to Prime K's panel. You can pay 50 bucks to kick someone off of the panel, right? Like if you give me a tier three sub, you can come on the panel. Also, if you give me 50 bucks, I'll kick somebody off the panel. Oh, yeah, this is definitely the height of the dialectical exercise. This is this is rhetoric writ large. I can't imagine why there's so few valuable, insightful, insightful, deep, detailed, nuanced discussions happening on Prime K's channel because of, oh, I don't know, fucking reasons. I mean, no, I'm not surprised at all that that shit is happening over there. But he's doing like panels on necrophilia and raiding people in with fucking people like, we should fuck dead babies and shit like that. It's fucking, woo, prime case. Right? Like, it's stupid. This shit shouldn't exist. Oh, and Dylan Burns is a fed anyway, just FYI. He can, he can spend however many fucking streams he wants deny it. He's a fucking fed. Call it what it is. Is the audience vote people off? Oh, even better. Did Prime Case ever allude to being a leftist? Never heard of him. I fucking, as far as I know, he's just some neo-lib capitalist grifter shit, uh, dude. He's like your typical lib. Ah, thank you, Zippy. Yes, yes. Fertus, Fertus did that, and then I tweaked it a little bit, but Fertus did the majority of the heavy lifting and work on that. So, <clears throat> um, yes, Crick, so grifty. Yeah, and fucking, I mean, what do you want? Dude, Hassan should just be like, everybody should just start ignoring Hassan. I want to know how 12,000 people watch Hassan. I want to know why 12,000 people watch Hassan. What has that dude ever said that was insightful or salient or a valuable critique of anything? When has Hassan said, when has he said literally anything of value at, to, to warrant... 12,000 people fucking actually like showing up and listening to him because the last time I checked uh, like 30, 40,000. Yeah. Okay. He's not pretty. He's not pretty. He's not pretty. Holy shit. He's ugly. Holy shit. He's ugly. People, people, you guys need better standards. I worry about some of y'all when you say shit like Hassan is pretty. He's not. He's not. Like, it's just, holy shit, man. I, 
You forgot the trigger, what the trigger for Cappy was? Yeah. It's himbo simping? I mean, Jesus fucking Christ, it's pathetic. I don't, I don't get it. I will never get it. I do not want to get it. I really don't. I'll straight up. I don't, if that's, if, if, I don't want to understand that. I don't want to understand that. Uh, Alex, Alex Neshev, Neshev, yeah, Alex Neshev, uh, his takes are pretty libish. Of course they're libish because he's a fucking neo-lib capitalist. He's not a socialist. Holy shit. Uh, Alex Neshev, I am ashamed of my people. I'm from Russia. Our prices are very high. I want world peace and friendship. I write through a translator. I don't speak well. Um, okay. So hang on, hang on. Let's go to deep L. Um, let's go with English to, where's my Russian? Okay. See if this works. All right. Um, there. All right. His takes are pretty livish. Hassan needs a cat boy arc. Dude, that'd be fucking hilarious. Ah. Uh, make something good. Yeah, Wither. Fucking get some food in you, man. Get some food in you. That's, that's, uh, Oh, Yogi, uh, here, let me help you. Um, there's actually three of them in this room. Uh, my favorite isn't in this room. It's a, That's just a, a hanging tapestry. That one's of a, a, an aut a autumnal uh, treescape. That one over there is a blue, uh, a blue colored theme tree with like flowers and birds in it. And then there's one up there on the ceiling that's actually um, like uh, sort of a multi-seasonal homage to earth and the transitions of the seasons the one in my um in my bedroom is actually a hand-painted tapestry it's 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 like hand paint uh, like hand inked cloth um and it is a it's a huge it's huge and it's um it's essentially a, a, a treescape it's a it's a tree but it's sort of a tree of life situation with everything in it that sort of thing um uh, so, in before you insulted his mother, says Cupcake. Um, I think his song is a good entry point for people on Twitch, but there are far too many people who stay at that entry point instead of moving on. Crimson, I don't think he's a good entry point. I think he misrepresents his position and he uh, speaks in bad faith about it. I think somebody with honesty and decency would be a better entry point. There. Yo, you thought it might be a tapestry. He looks awesome. Yes, um... Alex, good luck. Good luck. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, Yogi, I'm a big fan of putting tapestries on my walls. I don't like paint. I don't like like plain paint. Like in the rooms that I spend the most time in, I like tapestries on the walls and stuff like that. I like I like that Moroccan feel of cloth on the walls, pillows everywhere on the floor, comfortable places to sit, stuff like that. That's my that's my jam. That's my vibe. Yeah. So. Uh. Oh, that's going to be amazing. Oh, Cassidy. I can't wait to use that one for Popo's Bizarre Adventure. Um, that's, that's just fucking psychotic. Uh, the Ranger Pro Dude, Cricks, if you think Twitch has a lack of good discoverability, then you're... Uh, I suggest you try streaming, Cricks. Uh, Twitch has amazing discoverability. It does. Compared to every other system in existence, Twitch has amazing con discoverability. It does. I, I will... Look, Twitch is shit. Twitch is shit for a lot of reasons. 
but being able to discover smaller streamers is not one of them. It's one of the better discoverability systems. Uh, Crimson, I mean, more so that it'll suggest it'll suggest leftist streamers because you click on him. I wouldn't say he's good for anything else. <laughs> In agreement. Um, does it? Do we know that for a fact, Mayo? Um, <clears throat> uh, Sparkle, and thank you for the follow, Sparkle. Sparkle, the unicorn dragon. Uh, I also got a bunch of ch new cheap printed tapestries for my place because I'm in a small studio, but it has 13 foot ceilings and wood floors help so much with the echoing. Yeah, I have uh, I have a, a pad up here, uh, a moving blanket, you know, those like blue, th like quilted moving um, blankets that you get from like Walmart or some shit like or Sam's Club or U-Haul. Right. I've got one actually uh, above me all the way to like back there and then down to like right there behind. And then all of that is tapestried as well. So, but, you know, all of this is, like, soft padded. Yeah. Mm, I'm trying to find that. Uh, you know, I'm not seeing anything that pop up. We used to use that at the studio. Yeah, dude, right. It's fucking, dude, you could spend, you could spend thousands, right, on, um, on soundproofing. Or you go to fucking Walmart and get a three pack of pads for like 12 bucks. I mean, despite the fact that you're like propping up fucking Walmart, the environmental cost alone of, Shipping the pad, uh, shipping all of that sound deadening material, and doing the construction, and blah 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 blah. Dude, it's, it, you're you're better off just buying some fucking mattress pad, uh, some ship uh, uh, moving pads from Walmart or Sam's Club or some shit like that, or U-Haul, and just going getting on with it. It's just across the board. It's better for everybody. It's more economical. It works just as as well, all right. And you're not like raping some village for like petrochemical byproduct or some shit like that. So, oh, wow. Um, all right. Oh, yeah. Did y'all see the Kurdish youth chaining themselves to the European Parliament? Uh, I, I, dude, we did the Kurds dirty. We did the Kurds dirty. There's no fucking way around that. Um, really? I haven't seen it. Of course, I I rarely stream cricks. How do you access it, cricks? What is it? Um, people were promoting porn channels to the front too. It won't get shit done. It won't get shit done, whether. Won't get shit done. Um, were these the people we sold out to the Turks when we went through uh, US troops? Yes, Cupcake. Yeah, same people. Yeah, same people. Uh, <laughs> we did them so dirty. We did them so dirty. As far as I can tell, it's for newer streamers and pretty random. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. We'll save that for Popo's Bizarre Adventures. Oh, um, good news, everybody. Let's strap in. Good news, everybody. Nearly half of all older adults now die with a diagnosis of dementia listed on their medical records. 
up 36% from two decades ago, according to a new study. Now, one could argue that we're looking for it more and our, our ability to recognize these declines is, is getting better. But we're talking the difference between 2004 and 2017, uh, essentially, which isn't exactly like the 1970s versus now. Um, so yes, JAMA Health Forum published a, a study by the University of Michigan that uses data from 3.5 million people over the age of 67 who died between 2004 and 2017. So if an N of two uh, of 3.5 million isn't enough of a, uh, a fucking st uh, statistical value for you, then I don't know what to do for you. But when the researchers narrowed it down to the patients who had at least two medical claims mentioning dementia, 39% of patients qualified up from 25% in 2004. Um, so, yes. <sighs> Lead. Microplastics. Hormones in the food, pesticides, air pollution, all the stuff affects that, all of it. Plus, there's all sorts of fun stuff, like, um, hang on, ah, that's why. Plus, there's all sorts of fun stuff, like uh, the fact that tricyclic antidepressants or anti-chlorogenic drugs in, um, have an increased rate of causing dementia. So then there's pharmaceutical reasons and uh, that we prescribe people drugs that actually cause them to have more potentiation for late, eight, uh, late stage dementia. So I don't touch the aluminum one beasticle beast because that one's sketchy. That one's sketchy, and I've never gotten too far into it just because it gets conspiracy -y -y really quickly. Like, I can discuss tricyclic antidepressants and anticholerogenic drugs because we have, like, multitudes of studies that show that, yeah, that's, that's a side effect. Sounds like they might need more drugs. Yes, nonsense. Exactly. That's exactly what we need. We need to, you know what we need to do? We need to get, get these fucking regulations and all these regulators off the backs of these God-fearing, good, old-fashioned American pharmaceutical salespeople. They, um, yeah. That's, that's what we need. That's what we need. Um, SSRIs, too. SSRIs, I haven't seen increased rates of, like, late-age dementia, but to be fair, I haven't looked. So there may be some correlative values there, but I'm not aware of any studies off the top of my head but I tend not to operate in and around SSRIs anyway. All I, uh, all I can tell you is don't just come off of them, please. Um, oh, um, I want to name check this dude. Based dude. Oh, I want to name check this dude, and I can't say his name. <laughs> um, I'm going to put, okay, Kasim Jomart Tokayev. Tokayev? Kasim Jamart Tokayev. I'm putting his name in chat because everybody should know this dude's name. Um, so he is the president of, Kazakh, uh, of Kazakhstan. He is going to switch rule from his, um, uh, of his country from what's con classified as super presidential rule to a presidential republic with a strong parliament. What he is doing... Okay, this is essentially a functional dictator, right? He is eliminating the death penalty. He is um, easing registration on new political parties, making like cross-party uh, 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 registration possible. He's uh, <clears throat> putting it. He is putting restrictions on the ability for the president to place members of their family in high positions, and freeing the elections of mayors and various other pos uh, appointed positions that previously were. You know, the president could appoint a mayor of a city. Now the mayors of the cities are duly and freely elected. There's, there's, you know, with good reason why I point that out is because there's not too many examples of this actually occurring. 
Um, I've coll- I, I have a uh, I have an essay I never wrote, but I started the research for looking historically how many leaders have actually done this process of giving up powers, right? He was um, <clears throat> he he's already given up. These are essentially his remaining powers. He has already given up uh, the powers as the head of the Security Council, leader of the ruling party during and after violent unrests. Um, he kicked his relatives out of like influential positions in government and state authorities. Um, fucking his nephew's been hit with an embezzlement probe. Um, like for real, like this is this is one of those moments that you can sort of point to and go, it's possible. It's possible. It's rare, but it's possible. It happens. It's a doable task. Um, so yes, um, he's also, um, he's also stating that he wants to give back like provincial sovereignty to some degree. Three provinces were dissolved in Kazakhstan a bunch of years ago in like the fucking nineties and absorbed into other regions. Um, so like it was, it was to like, it had to do with like reducing the amount of like, you know, um, friction that the the ruling government would receive and so they basically dissolved three entire regions and just merged them into other areas but he's looking to give back those regions their their distinct sovereignty as well and give them like some sort of you know political autonomy um that they once once had like he's he's rolling back stuff that the previous leader who was you know sort of a petrochemical grifter as well for like 20 30 years Uh, What's up, Uh, Baldwin Orange? Um, So, yeah, like, I just, you know, shout out to Kasim Jomart Tokayev. It's possible. Don't, don't, don't bet the farm on it, kids. Don't bet the farm on it, right? Fucking leaders don't do this most of the time. But it happens from time to time. Uh, Rome had 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 a dictator that literally retired to a farm, gave all the power and all the wealth back, like, just, just take it. I did my job. And then he went and retired on a farm and was a farmer for the rest of his life. Right? It, it happens. But it's super rare. But it's always worth mentioning. It's always worth name-checking these fuckers when it happens. It's always worth mentioning that, hey, it is actually doable. So, hey, Nixa. Um... Yes, a little bit of inspiration. Kai, she's not even home. My mom calls perfectly right as a stream star. So she know that, <laughs> Karina. Oh, Karina. Um, like six months rule for a specific reason. I can't remember what. Yeah, nonsense. Um, uh, how are you, Nixa? Uh, uh, 990. Uh, I don't know what you're alluding to. I don't know what you're talking about. So, I mean, the short answer is no, we can't talk about it because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Uh, anyway. So, uh, um, nah, waiting for my dinner to finish cooking. What are you making, Nixa? What are you making? What's for dinner? Um, last week, um, Louis C.K. won a Grammy. Good for him. Um, Last week, middle, um, fucking, it was the late show. It was Thursday, wasn't it? It was Thursday. Pork loin with rice and gravy. Nice. Um, I don't eat pork, but nice. Pork is good. It's, there's no moral ethic. It's a health thing. Um, last week, Thursday, um, when, um, I came to air for the late show and we had that video of potential, um, Ukrainian helicopters striking the oil depot in Russia. So behind Russian lines, U.S. officials are saying that yes, that was that was real. Uh, Russia, um, Russia says it's Ukraine. Ukraine has yet to claim responsibility, um, but we've got um, we've got military officials on our side now that are saying uh, our our uh, senior national security uh, as well is saying that yeah, that happened. Um, Ukraine took some a couple of helicopters under Russian radar took it behind enemy lines and fucking struck their oil depot. That was real. So, 
Um, whether you want to trust U.S. security uh, apparatus with that um, with that statement, that's up to you. But if you do, and you are here for that, and you've seen the video, well, there's your secondary confirmation. So, um, good on you, Karina. Good on you. Uh, okay, wither cheddar brown rice, chicken, okra, biscuits, and some hot tamales. Good on you. World's going to hell in a handbasket. Ah, Nixon, nothing's new. Nothing's new. And the climate change is new. That one's a new one. I'm more concerned about that than anything else, quite frankly. The rest of it? Yeah. Par for the course. Par for the course. Um, oh. But uh, here's, a, here's a fun one. For all of my um, <clears throat> fellow deviantly aligned in, uh, individuals, uh, members of the queer community, those who would, <laughs> given another time and place, probably be put down. Um, oh, Fuzzy, I should sub somewhere else, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the, the sub. Um, Lauren Boebert, you know, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert. The woman who is married to a sexual offender, you know, that Lauren Boebert, uh, hit uh, exclamation sub fuzzy, um, and that'll give you the link. Um, so, yes, you know, Lauren Boebert, the, the ma married to an actual sexual offender, Lauren, uh, no worries, fuzzy, no worries. Um, yeah. Um, she believes that people should not be allowed to come out until the age of 21. She classifies it as the same as drinking or smoking and that the, um, that you should not be allowed to come out until after 21. I don't know what, how this is enforceable in her eyes, seeing as this is literally a first amendment issue. Like this is just unconstitutional for me to say I am gay and the government to charge me with a crime is just a First Amendment issue. Oh, yeah. I mean, Carpe, she, Bobert and fucking um, Green, right? They're functionally. I mean, come on. Come on. You know, uh, it's a small government, but military is 18 uh, at 18 is OK. What the fuck? Well, you see, you see. If you're gay, what you do is join the military, and then between the ages of 18 and 21, we will shack you up with a bunch of horny, isolated, frustrated, hormonal, testosterone-driven dudes, and you can just get your dick wet, right? So that, that's the encouragement, is that, like, if you're gay, join the military. See, 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 you fucking libtards don't understand. You don't grasp the fucking 12-dimensional galaxy brain chess that Lauren Boebert is actually playing. See, you can't even begin to comprehend the big brain that she's got. Children shouldn't be called any race or ethnicity till it's then. <laughs> uh, I hope she goes away, says Rex Parka. No. Um, uh, so, I mean, here's the thing. Lauren Boebert will go away. Marjorie Taylor Green will go away. But here's the thing. They will never truly go away. And they will be replaced by somebody else. I remind you, young ones, I remind you of a little name Sarah Palin, right? We've been down this road before. The, the conservative, social and fiscal conservatives love themselves a fucking dummy. They love themselves a dummy. They don't, they don't want an insightful, powerful, self-empowered, actu uh, like actuated woman, right? Like they don't, uh, they don't want that. They don't want somebody who can stand up to a room full of men and tell them, fuck you, and here's why, right? Like, they want somebody who is just this submissive little barefoot pregnant in the kitchen. Well, don't you know this is the way it should be because men are the superior of the species, yeah. 
they want that wide-eyed dummy. Right? That's what they're after. They want some submissive broad in the kitchen. So you will have more Lauren Bulberts. You will have more Marjorie Taylor Greens. You will have more Sarah Palins. That's just how this goes. <laughs> I can see Russia from my house. Uh, Sarah was at least milfy and she constantly shitted drill baby drill. Let's <laughs> give you something to work with nonsense. Um, Sometimes I feel like pa uh, Palin paved the way for Trump-like figures. Fuzzy, I mean, it's a process. She's a part of the process. She's a she's a paving stone in the road, right? She's not. She isn't the road itself that was paved. She's just simply a paving stone in the road. This process, I, I, I can I can point to like you know, fuck. Woodrow Wilson paved the way for Donald Trump to be in office due to the propagandization surrounding the labor movement and the 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 vilification of the uh, the uh, anarchists, the socialists, and the communists uh, back in the day, right? Uh, fucking w Wilson paved the way for McCarthy. McCarthy paved the way for you know this is it's just a process. It's this never ending process, and you could say the first fucking you know first fucking monkey to crawl out of the goddamn tree screwed us all, right? The the weird fish creature. That decided it wanted to breathe air paved the way for Donald Trump. It's just a giant continuous process of absolute shit fuckery. Um, Woodrow Wilson's uh, assholishness uh, is underrated. Dude, Woodrow Wilson was a piece of shit. He was. He's an American president. It goes without saying. <laughs> I'd, I'd vote for a weird fish creature at this point, says Fuzzy. In terms of contemporary American propaganda. You know what? Yeats landfish back into the sea, says Wilhelm. Man, fucking get back in there, bitch. <laughs> fucking. Uh, all the libs I know deify, deify uh, Wilson. Figures. Figures. Uh, Palin and the OG internet trad wife figures <laughs> back, back in ways. Uh, Korean Anna, Minnesotan, apparently. Yeah, she was, she said, wait, no, no, no. Palin's not from Alaska. Hold on. Or, or something. She's got like ties elsewhere. Yeah, she's, she's from Idaho. Sarah Palin is from Idaho. That's, that's where that mid country shit in her voice comes from. She's not Alaskan. Alaskans, by the way, sound a lot like rednecks. Um, that if you get the like Alaskan, you're like, why do you sound Southern? I don't know what it is, but Alaska has a, has sort of a draw. It's weird. Uh, Sparkle, I am Alaskan. Well, uh, so is Cricks. Sparkle, uh, you and Cricks are both Alaskan. It's <laughs> Jay, because they are. Um, <clears throat> I do feel obligated to remind folks it was an SNL sketch, and Tina Fey actually was who delivered uh, the Sea Russia from my house line, but Palin is super dumb. That is true. She never said it from her house. The The exact quote is, there are next door neighbors and you can actually see Russia from land here in Alaska from an island in Alaska. That's, that's the actual quote. Um, and then Tina Fey did the, I can see Russia from a house. Um. Oh, Larry Flint. Larry Flint did more for freedom of speech in this country. He took a bullet for freedom of speech in this country. Larry Flint, respect. Respect. It is sparkle. It is factual. Um. Oh. Oh, uh, Stephen Don's uh Donziger. A bunch of you probably know Steven Donziger's name. A few of you are saying it rings a bell, and some of you have no idea who the fuck I'm talking about. Steven Donziger is the attorney who took Exxon or Shell. Forgive me. He took a pet. Uh, yeah, Donziger update. I need it. Okay, so here's your update. 
Chevron. Thank you, Fuzzy. Thank you, Chevron. I'm like, it's one of the petrochemical fucking evil bastards, right? He basically made their life miserable uh, in South America. So they've made his life miserable by assembling a team, a global team of like 2,000 attorneys to make sure no one can ever or will ever sue them again by just campaigns of untold harassment, buying off judges, absolute corruption. I mean... I'd say corruption of the legal system, but it basically is just the way the legal system works. Either way, here is the update for you, especially fuzzy. Um, so Steven posted a screenshot of his call log from his phone. Um, and Geo. Geo and Corrections Corp, right? These are the two major private prison systems in America, right? The two major private prison corporations. Geo is the for-profit company who handles his house arrest monitoring. They called him at 2.15 a.m. to verify he was home. If he didn't wake up and answer that call, they would have put him on escape status and put him back in prison. It's intentional harassment. It's intentional harassment. They've been harassing this dude for years now. He was illegally put under home arrest. He was put in jail illegally. Yeah, so they've been fucking with this dude hard. Let's just put it that way. 99 Red. I do think homosexuality is a psychological condition. Um, I think it's a psychological condition akin to heterosexuality. I, I think both of them are psychological conditions. Yes. I think heterosexuality, homosexuality, and bisexuality, asexuality, I think all of these are psychological conditions. Yes. I mean, I am, I'm in agreement with you. In that regard. So. 990. Theory. National security secrets really do not exist. If a monkey, uh, if some monkey on earth is really going to hurt you, it's not a secret. Uh, Cricks. He's literally flagged. He's a, He's got ban evasion. Suspicious user flagging already. Don't worry about it. You think, you think I don't know somebody who asks whether homosexuality is a psychological condition is somebody who has bad intent right come on but thank you for the heads up anyway so what's up red if homosexuality is a psychological condition can it be induced by outside factors can a person who's not homosexual be made to think they are homosexual after sufficient exposure to pro-homosexual culture that normalizes it now hey carpe thank you um no I, I, this is, this is what I challenge you to do. If you are, if you are, um, heterosexual or red, if you are red, then what I would like you to do is really, really, really try and suck dick. Like really enjoy it. Go suck as many dicks as possible and tell yourself through the whole process. I want this and see if you start enjoying it. Because I don't actually believe it's a psychological condition, doofus. I don't believe you're operating in good faith. I do not trust anything you're saying, so I'm not in actually engaging you in any meaningful manner. None of my answers are my actual answers. Why would I even begin to engage somebody who I've already been warned by, now multiple on Discord, Community, uh, community members and Twitch's own flagging system is telling me is a suspicious user. I'm not engaging you in good faith. If you want to have this conversation, come on air and have this conversation with me. And then I'll actually speak to these topics with you. But you have to get on air with me. Otherwise, I don't care. I see your tags over there. I see them going by out of the corner of my eye. Again, I don't care. Until you get on Discord and actually engage in the conversation with me, none of anything you type matters to me. Put up or shut up. Stop being a cowardly keyboard warrior and get on the air and speak your mind. Let's see how you work on your feet with your orative skills. 
engage your ret- what, whatever rhetorical devices that you possess in your tool belt. Enter the dialectical exercise with me. Ach- attempt to achieve a synthesis. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can't though, can you? You can't. You don't have what it takes. See, it's really simple to sit on that side of the keyboard and just type. What actually takes balls or ovaries, whatever your choice of nutting up is, what actually takes it is to get on camera, to get on air, to use your voice, to be able to speak in the moment, to not be able to quickly Google something or duck, duck, go something. See, this, this is the part that takes work. But you will never do this because you don't have it in you. You will never have it in you. It's okay. Most, most men such as yourself live quiet lives of desperation. And that's what you're doing. You're lashing out at what you perceive to be a social weakness because you need to make yourself feel strong. You need to make yourself feel better. You need to, well, soothe that, uh, that inflamed ego of yours that society has caused. You see, the neoliberal capitalist modality of operation has coerced you and oppressed you from day one. And yet, you still, like any victim of Stockholm Syndrome, stand for it. You believe in that social conservatism. You believe in that capitalism, even though it is your very enemy. Even though it is the reason that you are disaffected. Even though it is the reason that you feel marginalized in today's evolving society. You still support it. You still worship it. And that alienation that you're experiencing causes you to reach out. It causes you to attempt to, call, uh, to inflict pain upon other human beings. But you see, I don't care about you. Not in that way. You will never afflict me. You will never affect my life. You notice I'm not even referring to anything you've typed. I can see the highlights. It doesn't matter to me. I'm not going to reply to what you're typing. You see, this is... This... This is, this is my space for all intents and purposes. I share it magnanimously with the community because I'm an anarchist. I believe in hierarchical organization. My mods select fellow mods. I don't even engage in that process, but I will never engage with you this way. Never. So either come on air or get over yourself. Because at the end of the day, nothing you type matters to me. Not in the slightest. I wish you well. I wish that you escape the yoke of your imprisonment. I, ho- I wish that one day you realize who your true masters are and that you escape that pain. But until then, it's okay, man. The queers aren't your enemy. Women aren't your enemy. Right? That's not, that's not what it's about. There's some really, really, really rich dudes that are absolutely fucking you over that have rigged this system. And they've divided us, black against white, brown against black and white, American versus Mexican, American versus French, American versus nationalism, racism, all this tribalism. And they're using it. They're using it to game and control the system. And you, you are a tool. You are a cog in their machine. By going around and propagating this sort of divisive rhetoric and this hateful rhetoric what you are doing is you are propping up those oligarchs you are making sure that the 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 republicans and democrats get away with what they do you are essentially a tool of the system and you don't even realize it and that's okay ignorance isn't a crime willful ignorance is the crime And so here I am trying to enlighten you, trying to help you, trying to give you, show you that glimmer of light that it doesn't matter. Dude, being gay doesn't matter. Being trans doesn't matter. Being bi or ace or aero, it doesn't, none of this matters. None of this is your enemy. Your enemy is yourself and the controllers of this system, the rich, the wealthy, the powerful, the political elite, the religious elite, these These are your enemies. So until you come to terms with that, I'm afraid we're probably done here. So either you quit spamming my chat and go away or we make you go away. But like I said, you're welcome to come on air and have a conversation with me. But you're never going to because you're a coward. So 
it's probably best, probably time for you to leave um, because, well, you are ban evading probably anyway. So I'm going to have to report that because TOS dictates that I have to protect the channel from the likes of you as well. Because again, we're all beholden to our corporate overlords. But you, you want to fight about queers because you're small minded, because you're petty, because you're impotent and because you have no true power in this world. And you're lashing out at those that you seem to, you see to have less power than you. You're a classic psychological case. Also, by the way, um, those that rail about ho a topic such as homosexuality that often and that much tend to be closeted homosexuals. So maybe one day you'll come to terms with who you truly are as well. Bye bye. Profit. If you didn't see the amount of hateful spam that that person was just doing, and you think that that is shutting down opposing opinions, then by all means, feel free to take that position. Um, but if you have an opposing position, you're going to be challenged to dis uh, to defend it. If you, if your defense of it is nothing more than hateful screeds with no facts, figures, sources, or studies whatsoever then you will be challenged repeatedly and at that point you will be told to come on air and defend your position and if you fail to do so and you continue to put hateful screeds in chat while also ban evading on twitch then you probably will be asked to leave at that point we very much like hearing opposing opinions i very much like having conversations with people I had a conversation with a white supremacist fascist last week. I also had one with a sock dem. I've had conversations with capitalists and liberals and fascists and racists and white supremacists and Hindu nationalists and all of them. But you have to back up what you say and you have to be willing to defend your point on air. Keyboard warriors get no respect. So, welcome. If you have a differing opinion, I'd love to hear it. But again, you will be required to back that opinion up. Just know that. And the same goes for me. When we get into it, if you want a piece, you can go look at Conversations 2.5, Dr. Professor SC, and you can see the amount of sourcing and study citing that I can, can and will do. Also, the dissection of your sources that I will do, if you need an instance. Carpe dang, I just got a new keyboard. Uh, <laughs> Nick's up. May have accidentally gone a little heavy handed on the crushed red peppers. Um, man, I'm a keyboard pirate. Um, it's almost like evolution isn't very efficient and human beings are flawed, but that does nothing to do with homosexuality. Homosexuality is everywhere in the animal kingdom. There's so many gay penguins. Um, yeah, I mean, homosexuality serves an evolutionary purpose or else it wouldn't exist. There you go. Um,. Last night, we discerned that there is Zoomer with all the internalized lib rhetoric with zero lived experience to back it up. Hmm, interesting. Um, the Nazi at least had the courtesy to get on air. Yeah, dude, the Nazi got on air. He defended his position. He's not a coward. He's, he's ignorant beyond all, all belief. He's ignorant beyond all belief. He's a bootlicking authoritarian thug, a racist, ignorant for sure. But he wasn't a coward. So, say what you will about him. He stepped up. He wasn't a punk bitch. So, fair play. Fair play to him. I have no respect for the, the keyboard warriors. Sorry. Step up. Put your fucking money where your mouth is. And have the conversation if you want to have the conversation. But just yelling in chat about, like, gays don't reproduce and gay homosexuality is a psychological problem and something, 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 kill the queers, right? Like, that's, that's what that always is about, is they want to eliminate the LGBT community. That's it. <sighs> so... Uh, 
it boils down to eugenics every time. Carpe, they're always three questions away from yelling about Jews, and it's always about eugenics. Um, at Karina, there's a variety of fucking theorems and reasons, etc., etc., etc. None of which I'm going to get into with somebody who argues in bad faith. It's that simple. Why should I argue in good faith if he's going to argue in bad faith? Yes, something, something stealing my oxygen. Every single chud ever inexplicably, says Rev. Oh, caboose. It's because America is essentially founded on eugenics. Dude, it's in us deep. It's in us deep. Eugenics is a core component to American culture. Both. Figure that shit out. Um, I have experience doing both. Why do you ask? What is the purpose of your question? What is the purpose of your inquiry, Prophet? I also own some land. And other things. So. What's up? Eugenesis? Fuzzy, not sure which. Just sort of, I think. Hit, hit enter prematurely. <laughs> Uh, oh, fucking that's that dummy. I don't need to. God damn it. All right. Um, Mark is red. And then delete them. Clear them. Thank you. All right. Let me just check a message here really quickly. Forgive me. Forgive me. Okay. Uh, curious the stance against landlords and or big banks while financially supporting them. There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. The sooner you realize that, the sooner you won't be a, a walking meme. Essentially, you're the, uh, the um, Mr. Gotcha. Oh, but you live in a society meme. So the sooner, uh, yep, uh, fucking latte already beat me. T we live in a society. Dude, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. And the sooner you realize that you cannot truly escape that and that the best you can do is minimize the harm, that, uh, the causal harm that you inflict upon the system, the sooner you will be, a, uh, the sooner you will not be a walking meme. Because when people say that, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, those of us that understand, well, I mean, at least Smithian economics and uh, a, a smattering of philosophy, sort of chuckle to ourselves when somebody brings that point up. It's kind of pathetic. Um, how do we minimize it? I'm not aware of these memes. I was asking sincerely. Um, you minimize it by engaging in dual power structures. You minimize it by doing your due diligence. Like, I do not participate in the majority of factory farming. Um, I do, uh, I've got a guy for everything. Um, the community, it's sort of a joke inside the community at this point. Um, that Kai has a guy for everything. Um, and my people are very, either the direct producers or extraordinarily ethical sourcers of product. Um, so you do your due diligence. That's how. And you attempt to work with organizations and entities that are at least uh, doing their best to alleviate some level of coercion, oppression, and suffering in this world. As far as financial entities go, you don't have to get a mortgage with Bank of America. You, in fact, can get a home loan from small regional credit unions. Right? You don't have to do that. You don't have to go to Wells Fargo to, to get a home loan. There's all sorts of credit unions that will do home loans for you. There's other methodologies to do that sort of thing if you are looking to do that thing. And as far as landlords go, landlords are parasite. Parasites. They are. 
um, even the father of uh, of capitalism, Adam Smith himself, was loath. He loathed landlords. He loathed the entire rentier class. So patents, intellectual property, rentals, mortgages, the entire rentier class, the found the father of capitalism, hated them all. He saw them and rightfully critiqued them as bringing zero value to the economic system. So when even the daddy of fucking capitalism is like, yeah, landlords are parasites. Maybe sit up and take notice of that. Rent seeking is lazy corruption. Dude, uh, I have that fucking tweet from, uh, who was that? Um, oh, Andy Tran. Fucking Andy Tran. Yeah, Smith and Mao agreed on shit. It's fucking weird as shit when Adam Smith, the father of e economics, and fucking Mao Zedong, Zedong fucking agree on landlords or parasites. Dude, no one, no one likes them. Um, I got that fucking uh, tweet by Andy Tran that fucking realizing that my landlord is living my paycheck to my uh, to my paycheck. One time I sent I sent rent later in the evening on the first and he complained because the bank overdrafted him on his mortgage payment. The fuck? I'm the main breadwinner in my landlord's family. Shit's real. They shouldn't exist. It shouldn't be allowed. But there's a billion, billion, billion dollars fucking floating around on that. There's a lot of money. It's the reason they want to get you back to work, too, by the way. Like, you know all the interstitial businesses that are reliant upon you going back to work and not working remotely, right? There's, there's we're talking, there's like, there's like tens of billions of dollars at stake if they don't get you fuckers back in the workplace. It's a thing. It's a thing. No, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism, and you just have to come to terms with that and work uh, work best uh, as you best can with it. So, <coughs> can we bring up Tesla's rent seeking for a goddamn chair again? Oh, fucking A. Dude, Tesla just... Can't. Dude, the entire automotive industry is going that way, by the way, Wither. The entire automotive industry is going that way. They're all going, like, subscriptions for features and shit like that. It's ridiculous. Nearly no ethical production either. Uh, yeah, Carpe. Um, my tea guy, Tim, the t Tim, the, the tea wizard. His tea is ethical up to the point where it leaves his hands. We, we did this analysis that night. His tea is legitimately ethically sourced in all sorts of ways, including transport in some instances. He has paid, uh, he has compensated this student who was coming over from Africa to America to a uh, courier the product. They were already coming on the plane to better their lives, to get an education, right? So to the like co-op, like that, that, that moment of transport that was going to happen anyway, he, he paid them even more funds to like, here's, you know, some college money. It's like if you can courier one, one specific product from Africa, from a, 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 tr a village, from a tribe in this one location to me, that sort of situation, like everything with Tim is ethical up to the point where it leaves his hands. And then it ends up, um, then it ends up with fucking like the crazy vegan restaurant here. We did the math. A single serving of what they are serving, which is a quarter of what a full serving is, they are selling for just over ten dollars. It costs them um, less than um, it costs them. What well, we did the math? It was point. It was point zero two five one cents. It's it's ridiculous. Like the instant it leaves his hands, capitalism takes over, including the ethical vegan restaurant here in Las Vegas. Fuzzy, it is, and I put a lot of work into it. I put a lot of fucking work into ethically sourcing shit. <sighs> 
not more, less. My rent was less than what he has, uh, he was overdrawn. Oh, wait, wait, wait. My landlord had never had to uh, drop box. Uh, we, uh, we have to deposit directly into his bank account. One day the teller was very concerned because the amount I was depositing was less than the overdraft amount. I was like, not my problem. Jesus Christ. She wanted me to deposit more. Yeah. Zippy, go fuck yourself. Right. Like, just go fuck yourself. Um, As if ethical veganism can even exist under capitalism. Uh, yeah, all right. Um, fucking, I did work for a butcher shop. It gets his stuff straight from northern Nevada. Uh, Dig, is that the guy on the north side that runs the, the barbecue shop as well off his butcher uh, off his butcher shop? I forget the dude's name. But is that the dude that has a, like a barbecue joint in the summer off of the, bar, uh, off of the butcher's shop? Because if so, I know who you used to work for. <laughs> no, but I know them too. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's a small town. People, Vegas is a small town. It, it is a small town. It's just the way it is. Um, oh, Dig, have you seen that um, Arcane Earth or Arcadia Earth? Have you seen that Arcadia Earth thing? Yes, it's Arcadia Earth. I want to go. This shit looks good. Small town with a very large tourist industry. Yep. I hate the strip too, Dig. This one, I don't know where it's it's not on the strip from what I understand. Like it's it's somewhere. Um there we go. It's at the showcase mall. So it is, it is on the strip. It's on the strip. It's at the showcase mall, which is always a bitch to get into. Dude, there's always construction there these days. Um, but yeah, dude, dig fucking. Yeah. Yeah. It's it. It's at the, it's at the mall. Fucking is what it is. But yeah, um, either cat on his birthday is going to be out here. Oh, dig. We should get together. Cat's going to be out here on his birthday, by the way. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah. Like either Cat and I, or you and I, or the three of us, uh, we get a locals discount. Uh, you and I do at least dig. We can get twenty percent off tickets. Uh, I won't tell when his birthday actually is, but he'll be here like later this week. So yeah, yeah, I want to go. It looks super interesting, and it's supposed to be yeah, it's like an interactive, like augmented reality uh, journey through Earth. So it's like nature themed. Um, then tell you what, Dig, um, why don't you and I just go one of these, like Kat and I have done like interactive uh, fucking installations before. Um, why don't I just plan on like a um, month out or something? Like let's just plan next month, Dig. It's not going anywhere. So... Um, Karina, I, I go to museums by myself. I don't go to museums with people. I need to be able to move at my own speed and look at what I want to look. Dude, go, going to museums solo, learn to do that. That's just a thing people need to learn to do. It's the best experience for a museum is just going solo. Um, yeah. Yeah, Caboose, learn to just do solo shit solo in general, for sure. Um, Cassidy, museums alone is way better. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Buddhist, I can attest. Same if it's something I'm into, this is nonsense. Yeah, like you just don't don't go with people to museums. This is not worth your time. Uh, it's like a music show, solo, be solo is better. And now Journey to the, through, the, uh, through the Center of the Earth is stuck in my head. Uh, well, good luck with that. Um, so, oh, I don't know. Um, oh, oh, fleshies are the worst. Oh, uh, Amazon's new worker chat app. 
So, you know, Amazon is setting up a new worker chat app. Um, Amazon is essentially creating a communi- in, in-house communication system for their, uh, for their workers, right? You want to know some of the banned words? <clears throat> Union. Pay raise. Restrooms. Plantation. Just some examples of words that are banned. Restroom and plantation. You knew pay raise in union was going to be banned, but pay ra- uh, but restroom and plantation. <laughs> Working for the company store. Uh, you got to see the Smithsonian Museum uh, dealing with mineralogy once, uh, but nobody in my group was remotely interested, so I didn't get to experience it properly. Goddamn redneck philistines. Says Rev. Yes. I take one person with me to more uptight museums, but we both move at our own pace. Otherwise, I'm, I go on my own. This is crimson. Um, but not piss bottle, huh? Mm. Fucking. <laughs> Can you say imminent private sector space accident? <laughs> Uh, shouldn't this be illegal under freedom of speech laws if they force their workers to use this app? Karina, no, because you don't have to take the job. Welcome to a right to work. You don't have to take the job. You you are free to starve to death under capitalism. One sec. Oh, I find music's perfect, museums perfect date nights. Uh, you know what? The best date I ever had. This is, this is fucking. This, the best date I ever had was with the philosophy major. Zach and I had the best date. And it had nothing to do with anything other than. The first time he stimulated me in a way that I rarely get stimulated, but then eventually it ended up too much. We went to see the opening night of Fahrenheit 9-11. Okay. Um, We we saw Fahrenheit 9-11 in theater. It's opening night. And then we went to Starbucks. We didn't get Starbucks. But the Starbucks down the road from it has, like, it's in a a complex. And there's, like, outdoor seating. And there's just, it's a general really, really, really cool vibe area. Michael Moore, yes, the Michael Moore film. Um, And so we then went and sat at one of those tables and spoke until the entire center had turned like shut down and gone home it, we closed the place out and we continued to sit there and talk having been instigated by this film by michael mars film by by fahrenheit 911 we had an amazing conversation it's the best date i've ever been on if he had been less of a philosophy nerd if that philosophy major was just like a minor and not ending up as a PhD Ox- at Oxford in philosophy, I could see myself having stayed with Zach. But Zach was too much to deal with. He was just too much to deal with. I've stated it before, right? Like you couldn't have a normal conversation with the guy ever, ever. I, I brought a red and white wa- bottle, a red and white bottles of wine over one night, and we're, uh, you know, I'm like. Which one do you want? Dude, I'm not kidding you. He ends up 
Like he ends up in that sort of like almost post-structuralist territory. Like, you know, what even is wine? How can one truly know if one is enjoying wine? It's like, bitch, you know what? I just, I popped the white wine and started pouring. I, like the, you, you sort of did. Like I had to do that with Zach because I had to make decisions for him sometimes because philosophy spiral. It just, it's like, can you just answer the fucking question and not pontificate on it? It just, yeah. Rabbit hole of analysis. Yeah, Rex. Oh, it's fucking, it just, it was too much. It was too much. But honestly, that was the most fun I ever had on a date. Straight up. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, just mix him into a rosé and see what he thinks of that. Yeah, latte. We have to sometimes, we just have to turn our brains off sometimes. Um, cheaty, right? Nonsense? Cheaty? Yes. I've seen the good place. I see, I've seen up to the court where, like, that was a season cliffhanger where they're like, we're going to, like, end it or recreate it or something. I saw up to that. Like, I think the final season I didn't see or maybe, like, the last two. But either way, yeah, yeah, I've seen the good place. Um, Crimson, I went to the Orlando Museum of Art last Tuesday. That must have been fun. I saw a Rembrandt, a Georgia O'Keeffe, a sketch by Raphael, and a little dancer statue that had some other really cool exhibits. But those are the ones I'm really excited about. I still have the map. Um, I was just looking at museums last night, locally. Um, Dig, that's how I found Arcadia. Uh, Arcadia Earth. was. I was looking for museums. I was like, you know what? Before I ditch this city, I want to milk this city for every last drop of like access to really cool shit it has. So there's like we have some really cool shit here in this town. So I want to make sure I get I get access to all of it before I end up inevitably fleeing the city one day. Yeah. It's one of the few uh, shows that actually had a good ending in mind and set it up the whole way through. That's nice. Wilhelm, not the moment, but I don't want to, I don't want to die here. That's my nightmare, by the way. That's my worst nightmare is dying in Las Vegas. I'm not kidding you. Um, I'm planning on seeing their, uh, their hot springs you mentioned previously. Yes. I'm down to go to all the museums with you, says Dig. I've only been to like two. Did you ever do bodies, Dig? Bodies is weird. Bodies is weird, Dig. Like, don't get high before it. Don't get high before it. Dude, bodies is weird. Oh, fucking, it's... Um, but, um, Dig, you know what? I would love to go to the, um, the gallery at the forum shops with you. Um, apparently they're pretty uppity. Um, I, I enjoy going places that they have no idea, uh, to, <laughs> to live in Kai in Las Vegas. Um... Yes, yes, Beast. That's exactly what it is. It's exactly what it is. Um, it's still here. Dig, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still here. Bodies is one of those ethical challenges. It's fucking... It's, uh, hmm. Yeah, fuck yeah. See, I don't know what anything it is. Uh, yeah, I was just looking. Um, yeah, I, I want to go to a gallery. There's a gallery in the forum shops, Dig, I want to go to. Um, they actually hold auctions. Um, uh, Park West. Um, they're a notorious auction house. But they have like a 7,000 square foot gallery here at the forums. Um, and they have Cassidy, you went. Yeah, it's, dude, It's they've got a lot of good 
they got a lot of interesting, like they've got Dolly and they've got, you know, I, they've got a lot. They've got Rembrandt, they've got Dolly, they've got also, they've also got some local stuff. They've got, yeah, I want to go there. So one of these nights, let's go do the, um, the Forum Shops Gallery, the Park West Gallery. 7,000 square foot gallery of just masters and locals. Um, yeah, I can't go into the, the, the rare bookstore, Cassidy. I can't go in the rare bookstore. I'll walk out bankrupt. I'm serious. I, I can't, I can't go to the rare bookstore. That's just, that's, 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 I know me. Um, yeah, that's just something I'm not allowed to be near. That's, you know, that's the one area that I am weak. That I am weak. I'll be like, I, I need this. I need this in my life. <laughs> um, dig, I don't know, because you're a fucking local and locals take it for granted. That Vegas has some of the most impressive supply lines ever run for any society in the history of mankind. Do we have everything here? As long as you know what to look for. Um, yeah, dude, locals take this shit for granted. I want to buy your store, not your stock. Just give me the store. It'll be easier that way. <laughs> uh, I lived above the anarchist bookstore here. Just take my money. <laughs> uh, Rev said the time I visited the Art Institute of Chicago, they had fantastic art in the back, but the avant-garde shit in the lobby was crass. Av avant-garde as always. Ugh. Seriously, why would I be moved by three color squares? Goddamn webs. I dude, I, I've had a I've had a bone to pick with modern art for years and years and years. I'm not big on like art things, like knowledgeable about it, but fuck yeah, I like art. Uh, show me some crazy shit someone painted and it's fucking what would that be? Hold on. 19,298,485 BC says Dig. Fucking A. Oh, so. Buddhist and I got some work done last night on, uh, or Saturday night on Project Zomboid. Um, uh, we, um, yeah. If you play Zomboid with us, holy shit, you're in for some fucking stuff. <laughs> Buddhist and I have plans. If you play Zomboid on the server, then. Uh, there's going to be some changes. <laughs> Buddhist and I, have to, Buddhist and I made some decisions. So let's just put it that way. We made some moves. We made some decisions. We, you know, we did some stuff. Uh, Uh, of course, I got into an argument with my art history professor in college about hunter-gatherers. Oh, God. I can only imagine, Rev. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Um, so, I actually feel like uh, so much sketchy goodness. Yeah, I know, right? 
Um, uh, fucking Rev. What, what, um... I can spell. Um, I can spell. Would you, uh, what was the argument you got into your art history professor uh, about Rev? Um, oh, oh, FYI, Colorado is now guaranteeing the right to abortion in its state. In its state law. Just, just FYI. Um, getting, getting an abortion without governmental interference is guaranteed in Colorado. The governor has already signed it in. It's, it's done. This isn't like, oh, it's fucking, no, it's, it's, it's done. Um, it, it, it positively affirms that Coloradans who want reproductive care, including abortions, will be able to get that care in that state, regardless of whether the U.S. Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade or not. So Colorado has ensured that it will be possible. Um, no, I have not nonsense. Dipshit was claiming they spent most of their time foraging class. If you don't have leisure, a leisure, you don't get art. Oh my God. He really doesn't. Wow. Yeah. Rev. I would have gotten into an argument with him too. Like you don't understand history. <laughs> the art history professor doesn't understand the history portion of art history. That's hilarious. Uh, just giving me more and more reasons to move back off. Huh? Only I could afford. Um, I'm trying to decide what I want to do, uh, to be perfectly honest. It's been a fairly uneventful stream other than the idiot who fucking was a coward and wouldn't actually get on the air with me. Um... Interesting. Ah, uh, cupcake. I just saw what the fucking the 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 fucking uh, pro uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Not here anymore. Not here anymore. Yeah, I see that fucking profit shit. Ah, uh, now cupcake. Yeah. Little bad actor, motherfucker. All right. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what I want to fucking do because, frankly, um, I'm long for the ride no matter what. I'm thinking um, where would I go if I moved away? Uh, Vermont or back east, maybe, Dig? Got a, <laughs> got a few options. Um, but, yeah. Somewhere with trees and water. Somewhere with trees and water. That's, that's sort of the deal. I need some land. I need some trees. I need some water. Ideally, a piece of property big enough to have like two residences on it so I can put mom and stepdad in one house, like over there, um, and then me in another house over there, <laughs> right? Um, how do I feel about the Pacific Northwest? I kind of want to go home, Rex. I kind of want to go home. That's this it's sort of I'm I'm I've hit that age where I kind of feel like I kind of want to go home. <laughs> Pro yes Russia or Ukraine. Pro people, anti-statist.
And when do we start buying the surrounding land as a community? I mean, once I find out, you know, once that's safe answer, true answer, I'm an anarchist. I'm an anarchist. My, your, what you define as safe, I define as correct. I don't support statist structures. I don't support hierarchical structures. I don't support coercive or oppressive structures. So any statist or capitalist infrastructure that they're, uh, th they're in that we're discussing, I do not fundamentally support ideologically or philosophically. Um, so that is the foundational opinion that I start from. Whether it's safe in your view or not is neither here nor there. Now, if I were in the trenches, um, I would say I'd probably be fighting on the side of Ukraine, seeing as one of these groups is an invading force. They both have fucking neo-Nazis. They both have white supremacists. They both have statist ties. They both have nationalism attached to them. But one of these has crossed the ethical boundary of invading their neighbors. Forget state lines. Forget nationalism. They are the aggressor. They came in and they fought. Um, they bombed. They murdered. They slain. They also resupplied Ukraine. And now Ukraine has more tanks than they did when they started, which is just hilarious. Um, but yeah. So as far as basic ethical frameworks go, Russia is the criminal in this series of actions, and I would act as such if I were in that region and if I had to fight that fight. Given the upcoming water wars, I suggest land in Arkansas. We have natural springs all over the place. Yeah, Rev, but it's Arkansas. Arkansas is too far south. Shit rolls <laughs> downhill, says so nonsense. Only thing I will, uh, I will, uh, only thing I will both sides is the innocent people on both sides that didn't want this to happen. But yes, Russia is absolutely in the wrong, way wrong, says next day. Yeah, dude, they just started scooping up motherfuckers and sending them. Conscription, right? Um, also, given climate change, so many tornadoes. <laughs> uh,. It is, but our regnets are anti-status. Feels like room to grow. Mm. Fair enough. I have just forgotten the word. I've literally just forgotten a word. A word just flew out of my consciousness. There we go. I got it back. I got it back. I got it back. Yeah, uh, Latte. Yeah, I live near the Great Lakes, and as much I hit the, hit the cold, I like having an abundance of water more. Yeah, dude, Latte. Dude, the water stuff is weird. The water stuff is weird. Kai, will Vegas be a climate refugees in the next 30 years? 30? Dig. 30? Th dig. 30. Dude, Vegas is going to be climate refugees in the next 10, probably. Have you seen the fucking water level at Lake Mead right now?
Yeah, it's not good. Like five to ten, Mississippi. Yeah, no, it's not good here. It's not good. Dig, you need to start planning that too. Dig, I know you're a fucking native, but you need to start planning for like evac. This place is not going to survive. It's 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 going to get rough. It'll survive, but the like weird and Capistan hellhole that it is. Yeah, you need to. Get get ready for an evac from here. Nonsense. Starting in like six months, it's on Fire Festival Watch. Tourists ain't ready for it for sure. Nah, the tourists won't even notice. Is this? Oh my God. When you flew over, Bobby? Holy shit. Look at that. This is ridiculous. Oh my God. That's, dude, Zippy. That's Lake Mead. Uh, Zippy, sorry. Uh, dig, dig. That's Lake Mead. Like a few days ago, basically. That's last week. This is, dude, this is, holy shit. Dude, that's like mead. Yeah, it's not. It's pond mead now. <laughs> Bobby, I figured I'd provide a visual aid. Yeah, homie. This place is fucked. This place is fucked. We're absolutely boned. That's not a lake. I know, right? Fetch your metal detectors and waiters. Um, and, and hey there, Bobby. Still got like Tahoe, and yeah, they're building multi-dollar homes where Bonnie Springs are now, dude. Fucking dick. It's we're we're fucked. This Vegas is done. Vegas is done. This place wasn't supposed to exist in the first place. Um, it's what all the reservoirs around Vegas look like. Uh, ain't about that fire season either. Thanks, says Dig. Yeah, caboose. <laughs> Fucking fire season up in Tahoe. Um. I don't care what the law says. If I move back to Colorado, there will be rain barrels, says Crimson. Yeah, dude, that water catch law is bullshit. That water catch law is bullshit. 100%. Caboose laugh. Okay. <laughs> Bury mine so they aren't visible, says Cassidy. Oh, fuck. You got a water catch law, too? Uh, Colorado. Colorado does. Colorado does nonsense. I don't think Vegas... I don't think... Uh, I don't think Nevada does. Dig, do you know that? Do we have... Nevada rain barrel water catch law. I thought we did. <sighs> Hold on, I'm looking. No.
No, no, it was it was amended. It was amended in 2017. Up until 2017, it actually was. Sandoval signed Assembly Bill Number 138 into law for us in 2017, um, allowing homeowners uh, homeowners homeowners to collect precipitation from the rooftop of single-family dwellings for non-potable n- domestic use. So, yeah. We can do that at least. Um, what's next? Rich band, <laughs> Arby's only. I mean, yeah. So not rentals. Yes, no. You cannot do that. Uh, cupcake. It did. Cup. Uh, cupcake. Fucking. I'm on a roll with your guys' names today. Zippy. Uh, Zippy with the facts. Laws are only valid if you get caught or can't afford to pay the fine. Uh, no apartments can't have catch systems. Dig. No. Single family domestic use only. Uh, latte, of course it is. Did you say single family zoning? Classic red line side effects. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's single family dwe- domestic dwelling only. Yeah, reason another reason to be an anarchist. Oh, Lottie, there's so many. <laughs> there's so many. Uh, Crimson, I think you can have two rain barrels in Colorado, but you can only use them for like irrigation and agriculture. You can't use them for drinking or household stuff. Uh, I'm pretty sure as ours say like just don't use potable. Like don't use it. Yeah, harvested water shouldn't be used for drinking water unless it's been purified. That's all. Like that's, that's, there's no clause on ours. Um, hold on. Let me, let me just check. Let me, let me pull the Nevada assembly bill just to see AB 138 overview. There we go. Text. Oh, all right. Interesting. Here's the catch, Dig. And it's it's on our side actually for once. Here's the catch. There is no limit to how much water you can collect. If you want to install a 600 gallon tank out back of your house doesn't matter the only limitations that seem to be placed upon it is that water falls from the sky and that it is a single family home that is using it for domestic purposes that's it That's the only qualification. So like an inch of rainwater on a thousand square foot home can collect 600 gallons of water. So yeah, there's no limitation on the storage capacity. It's, it's merely who gets to collect for what purpose. 
So as long as your your agricultural use of it falls within the confines of domestic agriculture, not commercial agriculture, you should be fine. Hmm. Make sure you have porches. Roof all the porches. Extend your house as wide as you possibly can. Catch as much water as you can. It only authorizes collection from single family homes, Cassidy, not sheds, not barns, outhouses, garages, or um, or what did like detached garages or that sort of thing. Cupcake, essentially, it has to do with the local watershed and the fact that you could t- potentially affect the uh, refill of the aquifers and the refill of the streams. The whole property is canopied by the roof. Yeah, dig. That's kind of what I'm thinking is that like, you know, I just like a big, I, I like, I like shade in the summer. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a desert, you know? And so we extended the, the home's ro- uh, like roof all the way to the property line. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Always purchase the mineral rights. Oh, dude, you can't get mineral rights out here, Rev. It's fucking, it's, it's ridiculous getting mineral rights out here. Your sunset awning, it brainwashes me. Who's ready for the water wars? Fuzzy. Here. I've been waiting for him for a bunch of years. Have you seen the home awning commercial with the old blonde lady? Your sunset awning. Uh, uh, wait, wait. I think I have. Uh, dig. I think I have. It's been a while since I've seen a commercial, though, to be perfectly honest. Uh, well, in Louisiana, we are ready. Is it because we have so many mines? Uh, yeah, basically. Yeah, it's it's the BLM land in combination with so much mining. My parents managed to get mineral rights and our well was the only one within miles that wasn't full of sulfur. <laughs> oh, Rev. Uh, fuzzy, in Jersey, we are not. Yeah, Oregon is off any artificial surface and no barrels, not without some high-priced permit. Imagine that. You can pay your way around it, Nixa. Nixa, are you, are, hey, Gemma. Um, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for saying hi. Um, Nixa, are you telling me? Now, I, I, I have trouble believing this, Nixa. Are you telling me that in the land of the free, home of the brave, that you can pay your way around restrictions? That the, the the peasantry is forced to forced to follow, that that doesn't sound anything like us, Nixa. That doesn't sound anything like us. That's that's that is some commie anti-American rhetoric that you are spouting. And frankly, frankly, I hope I hope Tucker Carlson gets a hold of you. 
I, I think you need to have a long heart to heart with the likes of Tucker Carlson so that he can he can put you back on the path to true Americanhood. Black. Uh <laughs> Oh, uh, long talk with Cucker Tarlson. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Bobby. That's how a lot of it works out here is the mineral rights were all sold ages ago um when howard hughes bought up the las vegas valley by the way howard hughes bought up the las vegas valley basically back in the day the hughes land corporation um then sold it to greenspun greenspun then sold all, parceled it out the mineral rights got sold separately from the land rights so like no homeowner no landowner in the las vegas valley owns mineral rights those all got sold out long before they got to buy the land Bobby, I made sure we got our mineral rights. Yeah, dude, that's not easy to do, depending on the area. It's not easy to do, always. Uh, I read that uh, read that it's either off a parking lot or of other surfaces like that. I'm like, oh, road grime, uh, grime water. <laughs> Yum. Definitely what you want to... Um, pe uh, Pennsylvania deeds have mineral rights uh, rights exclusions. It says F-bombs for you. Love the name, by the way. Um, so yeah, no, that's, that's, that is a difficult thing to accomplish depending on the area of the country you find yourself in, especially in the like Southwest West coast. It's not easy to grab them out here. Um, potentially dig, I don't fucking know. Or they're leasing them, which is even scarier, right? If they're leasing them then it's even crazier. Oh, uh, is there any, you know what? Mm. We're not. I, I. I feel like I'm sweaty. I want to get a workout in proper. I didn't get to do legs or arms. You know what? Yeah, I think that says forgive me. I really don't like doing less than three hour streams. But frankly, I feel like today is the day that I kind of want to do it. Um, I have a couple of workouts I want to get in and shit like that. And I am going to just do that. Um, it is what it is, Crix. It is what it is. I got shit to do. I may be playing Zomboid, so you'll see me on VC later. Um, Fuzzy, do it, homie. Be your best self. Thank you, Fuzzy. Um, let me too, Dig. Uh, America's just priming us for the Water Wars. It is, Crimson. Um, I'm going to read you out to Endless. Um, but you'll see me on VC. I have a couple of things I want to accomplish later. Um, so you'll see me around. But it's just easier to get a couple of things done now rather than end up at like 11 p.m. or some shit like that. And then I'm struggling against it. It's just easier for my schedule. Um, I got a couple of few things coming up too. I'm going back to the piercer. Um, no new holes. We're just, uh, <clears throat> we're changing jewelry and increasing size. So when that happens, I'll let you guys know about it. And there's a few DGen story times coming up anyway. So there's a few things planned. Also, we're going to have a couple of really good uh, uh, Popo's Bizarre Adventure stories. Um, there have been a couple of good ones to hit the news cycle recently. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, we're going to raid over to Endless, though. So you guys take care of yourselves. Like I said, look for a VC. I'll be on sometime. Bye.